Hey, welcome to another video from The Outdoor Analyst. Today I've got a fun one for you. And I really just wanted to jump into the whole area of watches. And this is such an incredibly vast topic that it's really hard to cover, especially if I just kind of want to say, hey, this is kind of like the intro to watches before you jump into them. What do you really need to know? Almost everybody who's a knife reviewer or gun reviewer will tell you don't get into watches because of the price. And that's really the, that's really why they always tell you don't get into them. It's because to get the same quality that you can get in a, let's say a folder or a fixed blade or even a gun, the, um, the, the absolute amount of money to get that same quality is astronomical. And it's actually limitless, which makes the hobby so much more insane, so much more, I don't know, almost disappointing in some ways, but it is also pretty awesome. And watches are really fantastic. I think whether you're a guy, whether you're a gal, you need to have a nice watch. Um, depending on what sort of occupation you have may change the style, the type, the amount of money you should spend on one. But uh, I think everybody needs one. You know, it's just it's just a part of life. It's a part of kind of the um, uh, just a statement of who you are and what you like to do. But getting into it can be extremely complicated, and it can be super simple if you want it to be, or you can make this an insane addiction. Uh, you can go one way or the other. So for all the people that are not really into watches yet, this is just a basic overview of the most simple way to put things out. And boy, you could do like a hundred videos just on introduction to watches. Um, so I'm just gonna go into a few different things. One, there are generally two types of watches that exist, and they really do play a big part of price and also accuracy. There are quartz watches, which are ran off of batteries. Um, let's say this uh, Faction Fossil watch here, or this G-Shock is actually a quartz watch, which means batteries run out. Most of your lower end watches, now there are some insane battery watches out there, Grand Seiko spring drives and all that craziness that can cost thousands upon thousands and, and are really incredible. But for the most part, you have a battery in this watch, it will run for two years or so, and then it will die. What it will also do is it will have a tick. It will go from second to second in one single tick each time. Now there are some very small exceptions out there, but generally that's how you know you have a quartz watch, is it ticks, the seconds will tick. Some people hate that, some people love that. And it will also be nearly incredibly accurate for all quartz watches. They're incredibly accurate. They don't change. You, they'll maybe lose a couple of seconds a, a month or a couple seconds a year for some. And they're very, very accurate. They're way more accurate than all your incredibly expensive watches out there. And you're, that may just be a shock for some. Mechanical watches are literally ran by mechanisms. That's These two are mechanical and they are much less accurate than the cheapest of cheap quartz watches that exist out there. You can buy a $50 Timex that will hold a better time than a $20,000 Rolex. It's just how it is. Mechanical watches are really run off tons of little mechanisms and springs and momentum. And once that, you know, those just, it's not nearly as accurate. There's too much to it. So there are two types of watches, quartz, and then there's mechanical watches. There are, there's a lot of caveats in between there, but that's just the basic breakdown of it. Generally, quartz are way cheaper. They're easier to manufacture, they're more accurate, and for the most part, they are shunned in the watch world as being cheaper because they're easier to do, because they're just, they're just cheaper in the, in the long run. They don't have all the crazy amounts of mechanical worksmanship that goes into making a watch work, which is really, really, you know, it's cool. That's, that's why everybody loves mechanical watches. They're, they are awesome. You have to wind them or you have to shake them. They, they work by really cool mechanisms and there's a lot to it. Now, that is the basics of what's out there. <laughs> that's just like the very, very bottom baseline. So what do you get when you actually start spending money? Well, I brought out this cheap fossil watch because this is what got me into watches to start with. It was a $30 eBay pickup. I just needed to look decent for a meeting way back in the day. And you know what? I thought it looked really good. It does look pretty good. It looks kind of classy. I loved the leather strap. It looked really high end to me. And to me, I was nice and rocking it that day because I picked up a good looking leather watch. 
Did I know it was quartz then? Nope, didn't know a thing about it. <laughs> I honestly thought almost all watches worked off of batteries. Now, what's the kind of comparison in the knife world? It's a cheap Chinese Gerber. You know, it's a Gerber knife. Sorry, this is a mess. I've had this since I was a child, but I'm trying to find like old Chinese knives. I just don't really have any around. But here we go. This was made in China. It's cheap. Does it work? Sure. Um, and, it's, and it's okay. You know, this was like a 20 or $30 knife maybe at the most back then. It's probably less thanks to joyous inflation. And it got the job done. And that's kind of what, you know, your cheap fashion wash will do. Anything under $100. Do I recommend them? No, I do not recommend buying a fashion watch. They are actually very, very cheap. They work. There's nothing special. There's nothing nice about this. And then as far as even quartz watches go, it's on the very, very low end. I would never buy a fossil watch again. Would I ever buy a cheap Chinese knife again, even from Gerber? No, I never would. It just, it's just ridiculous. So what's kind of your move up from there? Well, your move up from there is just really anywhere, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Sorry, got a crazy cough getting over a nice summer cold. But for me, it was a G-Shock. Now, this is like a, one of the smallest G-Shocks that are out there. It's quartz run. It's going to run out of batteries in a few years, but it has a nice little analog. It has, you know, digital. It has backup lights, and it's insanely tough. It's waterproof. I can literally throw this watch off of, a, of off my house. I can smash it into a wall. I can do any hard working task with this watch and it won't break. Most likely I'll have tons of scratches and my, and my fossil watch will absolutely shatter if it falls off the house. I don't have to worry about that with, with a, with a G-Shock or your average Casio for that matter. They're much tougher. They get the job done. It's still quartz and it still costs, I don't know, like a hundred bucks or a little less than a hundred bucks for that. But it's really a step up. And let's say your job, you have a very, you know, you work with your hands all day. You, you want this. You really do. You want something like a G-Shock because you can beat it up and you won't even be able to tell it. It just takes it, keeps on going. Something else that's out there is magnetic fields. And no one really ever talked about this starting off with. Most watches, especially mechanical watches, are influenced by, by, by magnetic fields. That, that we're talking about laptops, your cell phone, all these things have huge magnetic fields. And if they're not rated for it, which most of the cheaper ones aren't rated very well, it will destroy your watch. <laughs> that is something that most people never talk about, but we live in, you know, it's 2022 right now and everything has a magnetic field to it. Now, I guess before I jump into that, I should say kind of what is the equivalent in the knife world to a G-Shock? To me, it's like a Demco knife, an Andrew Demco. This thing has a very cool lock. It is mainly meant to beat the absolute crap out of. This is a Demco 8020S, it's one of the slimline ones, and it is incredible. You can just beat this knife to death. It's really tough. It's something I'm just gonna go work really hard with. And that's what I think of when I think of G-Shock. Tough, really awesome. Not super cheap. $100 isn't cheap, and you know, make 200-ish for a Demco or something really isn't that cheap either but it's very, very purpose-built and tough. Now, when you move over into the mechanical world, you get something that's a little different. You will find tons of Seikos and tons of knockoff companies, and I'm gonna just start with what a lot of people will, will, will lead you into, which is either micro brands, knockoff companies, or Seikos. They use cheaper mechanical movements but the main one that's used out there, and it's from Seiko, it's Japanese movement, is the NH35. It's almost in every micro brand watch, which means from nearly $500 down, you're almost always going to get the same movement or something incredibly similar, which is what this watch has. Now, from that point on, when you're talking like the $500 down, you're gonna to find tons of companies that provide a lot of extra basics, really cool features, without really a lot of like just care and polishing. It's kind of be cool watches, but not necessarily, you know, really high quality. You're gonna find a tons of that out there. And this one, for instance, is, looks very similar to an Omega that I really wanted. This is from Pagani. It is a knockoff of an Omega Seamaster 300 that I love. And I didn't want to spend $4,000, so I spent 80 on this thing during a sale. What this has is a Seiko movement, an H35. So it's almost like basically every Seiko out there because it seems like all of them have that. 
which means for any wash that's under 500 bucks, you'll generally find a Seiko movement. I mean, it's just either something that are called a Miyota, and they're very, very similar. They're mechanical, so, you know, I can, I don't know why I have these on the little thing, but I can wind this and keep it going. So it has a nice winding ability, and oh, look, the seconds are moving now. There we go, now it's working. Set the time and do all that. Basically, it is a very decent mechanical movement for the price, and you're gonna see it everywhere. But what you'll also see with anything that's pretty much a mechanical watch under 500 is fairly decent features for micro brands. Like you'll have really cool loom with all of these. You'll have nice rotating bezel. You'll have, basically they're all the same though. They're really all the same. You're gonna find almost the exact same watch from different makers and different looks. They'll have the same innards, they'll have the same loom, and then they'll be mechanical. They will hack, which means you can stop the seconds when you wanna set the time. They'll have a date on them generally because they're all using the same movement. They all work the same way. And kind of my reference to this is, this is like a Strider Protec mix. It's basically a knockoff of the really high-end knife. This costs, uh, I don't know, 150. This costs 80. The real one costs like, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 for the Strider or four to 5,000 for the Omega. So that's kind of like my, my, my comparison there. It's still good. This will do everything you need. This cost me $80 and it's really the same watch that you'll get basically from 500 and under from every single company that exists out there. Kind of similar to this. Similar steel, similar put together. You have aluminum, you have, I think, 154 cm on the steel. Pretty decent in the knife world, not great. What do you get when you move up? When you move up, you start to get a little better movements and you start to get a little more finesse when it comes to the what what's you know put into the watch. For me, uh, the next move up for me was an ocean crawler. And I just love this because they're made in America. They are not all American parts by any means. They use a Swiss Solita, I think SW200 movement, which is very smooth for the price. Um, this watch looked gorgeous. I loved everything about the look of it. And to me, what Ocean Crawler is really known for is incredible depths and really incredible, I guess, destruction ratings. They're kind of like baby G-Shocks. When you literally take the, the tests that go into G-Shocks, this is half of it. And in the watch world, that's incredible for a mechanical watch. You can beat this thing to death. I've taken this hunting. I've taken it it, it's, it's taken incredible amounts of recoil and shock, and it still works just perfectly. Which is why I decided to go up in price to something very cool like this. In a similar price, in the knife world, it's going to be like kind of getting a Sebenza. Now, take Sebenza, make that Hinderer, make it Medford or Strider, basically the same sort of thing. You're kind of getting the top of the line materials and craftsmanship without paying custom prices, which is kind of what a micro brand will do. And in the night, in the watch world, that's a thousand dollars and under, roughly. Maybe take that with a grain of salt, depending on where you're buying stuff. Um, you can get pretty much the best of the best as far as like, eh, you know, just the me the mechanisms. You you'll get something that'll be really nice. It'll do everything you need for under a grand. And that's pretty much your micro brands with your Swiss movements, or let's, you know, even take this. This is my, it's Sunday, I'm wearing my Sunday vest. This is a Christopher Ward C60 Trident um, Ombre. Awesome watch, same innards as this. This is actually officially Swiss made, or all the, does that really mean everything is made in Switzerland? No, it means most of these companies, it's just kind of like the gun world. You only have to have like 40 or 60% of the, the gun that's actually made in that country, essentially the parts, <laughs> and then it's it's Swiss. Most of this is probably China, if I'm telling you to, to be honest. Most Swiss watches are probably mostly China. And then just enough Swiss parts to say Swiss on there. Uh, so there you go. Surprise, surprise. That's how the world really works. But as a good comparison, pretty much anything really $2,000 and under, it's kind of like getting you know your, your top-end production knife. Same thing with your watch. What you get above that is higher fit and finish, and a little bit better movements. You can get, and, and then the sky's the limit on movements. Let, let me tell you, I mean, you can go out in there and buy million dollar watches that have tourbillons and insane mechanisms that are just 
insane because people wanted to, to create something crazy. Um, nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> that's what you're really paying for. When you get into the higher end brand names, you're getting like Omega or Rolex, you're paying for a brand. You're kind of doing that really close when you get into the Sabenza world, you're kind of paying for brand name too. But at least in the knife world, you can do that for 500 to a thousand dollars. You can get to top of the line brand for that. In the watch world, you don't even get to touch a nice high-end brand until you hit about four to five thousand dollars. And right now, you want to get a Rolex, like the minimum Rolex you can find on the entire market is about six grand. That's gonna be used. <laughs> so that's why people say don't get into watches. It's because you can't get the same quality for nearly the same price for like as a knife, fixed blade, or a gun. That, that, that's why people say stay out of watches. So this is just a really basic overview of quartz watches, kind of my super basic journey. This is not all my collection, but I feel like this was just a good representation of where you can go in the watch world. Start off with anything nice and cheap. Fossil got me into watches, therefore I love the Fossil. I've had this, I actually had like three Fossils from back in the day because they cost 30 bucks on eBay. They looked really classy and they got me everywhere I needed to go. G-Shock, under a hundred bucks, you could buy some really like crazy high-end ones if you want to do insane stuff in the water um, or, or off-roading, whatever. They are incredible. They are almost indestructible. And that's what's amazing about them. You can buy tons of cheap micro brands and get really cool looking watches with awesome ceramic bezels and sapphire crystals, which are really hard to hard to scratch, which is really incredible. You can get halfway decent movements for mechanical movements, and you can find it all under 500 bucks. You can even find Swiss movements for under 500 bucks. You know, I ended up getting this watch for much less than that, and it retails for a grand. It's just the, it's the world you're in, but if you're going like MSRP, it's gonna be pretty crazy. So anyway, just a basic overview of watches. My goodness, there's so much more information you could just go into. I hope this kind of gave you an idea of what's sort of out there in the very slightest of ways. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If you like watches, you know, I'll, I'll throw up some cool reviews. I started to, to really love them. I think there's a lot of personal taste that goes into them. They're really, really cool. And I just, I love the creation uh, that, that, had, that just flows with it. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. I'll catch you on the next one.